Hey there, Christopher here with a quick update before this week's episode. I just wanted to let you all know that we have a website at theworldstandard.com. That's all three words squished into one, dot com. The link is in the episode's description. Head on over and check out some behind-the-scenes content, some insight into each of our story arcs, as well as exclusive artwork done by us. While you're there, feel free to sign up for a monthly newsletter, The Standard News, where we run down what we are doing each month, including a release schedule and what we are recording and planning to record, as well as anything else we feel our listeners should know. Also, since I have you here, feel free to help us make this podcast continue to grow by donating through Anchor. The link, as always, is in the description, and is available on our website by clicking the Donate button at the top of the page, or at the bottom of the drop-down menu if you're visiting the site on your mobile device. We want to do more with the world standard, and in order for us to do that, we need the show to bring in a little security. I'm sure you understand, and if you feel like that is something you would be interested in doing, we would greatly appreciate it. We have big things planned for the future, and we can't wait to show you. With that out of the way, enjoy the episode, and uh, I guess, uh, don't sniff glue? Yeah! Welcome back to the Rolled Standard. I'm Aaron Hume. Oh, Yay! <laughs> he has returned. Welcome back, buddy. Your left. Left is left. <laughs> Your left, Jake. Oh, oh, God. This You're is so right. fucking weird. I know, right? The Holy intro starting shit. from there. I'm always last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Now, now, by the nature of the show, I have to keep this in just yep. so that I can, I don't feel so bad about <laughs> no. doing it to Levi so oh, often. No. Right, yeah. No, that's true. That is true. No. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Jake's here. Nate's here, too. So is Christopher. And Levi. Welcome back, guys. Yeah, uh, it's been a fucking it. year. It has been a year. It's been a good year. And everybody's everybody who's everybody is here. Yes, actually, our entire extended cast is here, which is rare. And actually, serendipitously, uh, he showed up from Pennsylvania independently of us planning to record this today. And he's here today, so we figured you're getting on mic. Yeah. No other option. We're not going to spend any actual human quality time with you. It's all going to be work. Yes. <laughs> clinical, cold. I'm sorry. Like Actually, I'm not. I can't be emotional. Like my last marriage. <laughs> oh, no. Damn. Oh, oh, no. By the way, I signed divorce papers yesterday. Hey, that's Woo! exciting. Wow. Hooray for divorce. Yeah, when do we burn your your groom's tuxedo or whatever you got? Is that a thing? I, do I don't know. The girls burn the dress. They do? Yeah. Nowadays. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's I was really? unaware. I left my, my suit that I got married in in the house that I moved out, the apartment that I moved out of to move to Pennsylvania. Oh, you just left it behind? <laughs> Man. Cold. Left it. He's cold to himself. Beautiful. <laughs> like, look at that memory. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, yeah, I'll leave that here. Yeah, man. It, uh, it's good to have you back. How you been? I have a horrible boss, but a wonderful life. Good. Hey, man. That's not the worst horrible thing that you could have. It's way right? better than the other way around. Yeah, yes, could, yes. Totally wonderful boss that. and a terrible life. <laughs> <laughs> horrible. <laughs> so, to, f to preface this at all and to put you on the spot... Uh, when did you stop listening to our show, Aaron? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the way my account works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Thank you, Nate, for getting my joke. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, terrible. Uh, busy man, lots of things to do. <laughs> lots of things with your new good life yes. without us. <laughs> you sound resentful. I, I, it's just the voice. I feel a <laughs> note of resentment. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, it's just the voice. Listen to it. Come on. <laughs> it's yeah. hard to give the same inflection. You're sounding a little gruff tonight. Sounds like, like Joan your Rivers on dropped. a binger. <laughs> if, he, if he talks less, he can talk more on the podcast. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you could get one of those Stephen Hawking machines where you know it just I mean, you type it out and it just. How would you be able to tell where my resentment in my voice would be then? It's unimportant. You could toggle. Well, well, it, oh, you guys it, no, made it important. We don't need that. <laughs> yeah, it's how furious you tap. That's true. No, I, there really should be like an inflection, like shift, like how we hold shift, right? And then, but or like there's like they just. Oh, you just talk just, in all caps. No, they they yeah or that. Or that. Well, oh. How would it like? Is there caps like? for Morse code? No. Well, I, it's beyond Morse now. <laughs> Guarantee it. I don't understand what I'm going to become in this weird future. A monster. Verse. <laughs> A monster. <laughs> All right. 
All right. <laughs> we've we've fucked around long enough. Yeah, we've we've determined uh without that a shadow of a doubt that Nate is a monster. <laughs> <laughs> What I mean by that is we're done with the show. Goodbye, everyone, and good luck. See you next week. (laughs) Yeah, we don't get a joke. I'm just kidding. Uh, Well, you're you're, you're kidding, rather. I hope. (laughs) I have no way to confirm that. Yeah, please. Please be kidding. Yeah, Um, we can't tell Nate's tone anymore. No. Right, no, because he's a machine. Yeah. A monster, I mean. Uh, <laughs> a monstrous cyber machine. Cybert machine. <laughs> Cy- <laughs> Cybertron. Oh, come on. God. So, we, over the last year, have established a ridiculous amount of canonical details <laughs> and characters <laughs> in the world of what we call the, the rolled universe, or is it the standard universe? Uh, I think... I like calling it the standard the universe because it makes universe. it sound boring. so basic. <laughs> yeah, it's like the standard universe. The basic universe. It just sounds hilarious because it's yeah. like, it sounds very... It's it sounds like, the, like, like, but it's the standard universe, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> like pi- pumpkin spice lattes. No, no, not that. <laughs> what? No, that's basic. Oh, yeah, man. that's basic. Not standard. This is the basic standard universe. is like it's like the difference between like uh, it's the default because it's the best one. Yeah, basic <laughs> you know what I mean. Definitely below standard. So yeah, we're, oh we're, for sure, we're not no. basic. We're standard. It's exactly. like <laughs> it's like units of measurement. One of them is definitely superior. Well, that's metric, yeah, yeah. and we're never going to be that. <laughs> well, if if basic is measuring things in in uh, inches, the standard metric, is measuring it in feet. The rolled metric. The well, rolled that might work. The rolled metric sounds yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh my god. That's what we need to call our new, scale. New year, new show. New year, new metric. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Happy New Year! It's fucking October. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, this is literally October first episode. This is the bonus episode. Yes, that should be addressed actually before mm-hmm. we just go on what to the are tangent. What we doing here? Well, the basic things. Uh, we're just doing whatever. <laughs> no, we're, we're currently just... sharing a microphone. I, they are. Yeah, it's hot. This we're is... within kissing range, right? Would you consider that? We could. If I yeah, still they're... had a beard, we could braid our beards together. They're That's... very close well, to that close. lady in the tramping. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, he's tramping her. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell from like the probably from the title of this, uh, this is our year in review. Yep. So our, our last episode of the first year and our first episode of the second year are both airing on the same day, today. Beautiful. If you're a fucking psychopath, you listen to this one first, but uh, <laughs> the last episode you should have been listening to is um, what we called our one-year one-shot yeah. of Call of Cthulhu coming back to the beginnings. So fun. Oh, man. <laughs> Levi and Jake never got the chance to play so with us. There. There, Jack. Oh man, I was what about it? It's one of the best role playing games I've, I've ever played. It was honestly. it was a blast. It is the most brutal thing ever, and we didn't get to experience the brutality when we were in Nevada and Wentworth. Uh, we got very lucky to have avoided most of it. Dude, I'm too generous of a game runner to run Call of Cthulhu accurately. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Um, I'm generally like relatively a fan of the players, so like it's hard for me to kill you guys. Or in moments where it's like, this is where it could turn. Boy, I'm just like, I yeah, sure it's not felt like turn. you wanted to. Oh, please listen to the last episode before you listen to this. <laughs> well, I know it's true though, because like you guys could have died. Yes. Right. Because I do. Okay. Just as a. Because like I said, you should have. As you said, should you should listen to the first episode first. Uh, so that if this spoils things, it's on you. <laughs> but uh, yep. At the end, when the uh, the nudes left you guys. Ideally, they were supposed to leave nobody, no witnesses. So they would have attempted, they would have essentially tried to kill you guys. And with um, uh, Roy Cephas, he pro- they probably would have succeeded because that thing was devastating. That, well, that's, that's, that's part of the thing that made, uh, made me curious as well because I kind of assumed that might be the case. Mm-hmm. And then you had confirmed it. And one, you made a good decision in not doing it because of the fact that we're not just playing a game at a table as. We were, we were building a story. Exactly. And that we're, was an intro to us. That was that was necessary for these three guys to suit. Well, to not work. only that, but you didn't you didn't engage what it was that got rid of them. Mm-hmm. Levi did, and he took a huge hit to do it. That's true. And that was a very it was a great narrative moment for you to have them kind of just like, all right, all right. Look, I was sweating the whole time. Because he spent so. thirty one luck points. Yeah. To make to make that a success, it was almost the same reason I decided to to make Hubert, um, to, to permanently switch bodies with him. Yeah, on the opposite side right. of the spectrum. Be- because he, he 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 ran out of luck points in that situation. Well, actually, yeah, yeah, he ran it was out. Almost the very similar. I see a trend going. Well, it's well you. you're always the you're always the. I mean, like the martyr. In, you're the, yeah, you're in the, the back. You're the you're the load blower. Yeah, <laughs> in the background of Numenera, you were you were constantly like, as soon as we saw the fucking light, you're like, let me fucking touch you. I want to touch you. I know. I did. It's great though. You need that character though in a lot of these dynamics. Is you 
you we, we always have like three dudes, right? And they're always like the straight man, and then like you no, know, it, it's a thing. Like the guy that's just like hard hard to attack. You yeah, know, like, you don't have to defend it. <laughs> well, I, I no, just, no, it's, un- like... it's, it's unbelievable that it's Nate. No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You know, uh, and then you've always got like the goofball, and then you've got now nah, there's various other archetypes too. And then I feel like we have like well last 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 episode we had two goofballs and a straight man. <laughs> actually, we had three goofballs and three straight men, to yes, be honest. Yes, so, like, totally. That's actually... I was we were regular Jekyll and Hyde. people. What, were, what, what, dude, Troy was not a goofball. Okay. Let's, no, he wasn't. Let's, I was, that's guilty by association, all right? <laughs> that's what... That's, I, th- okay, that doesn't count. Okay, that's fair. He was, he was the gambit. Let's talk about a little bit of uh, that most recent Call of Cthulhu game before we do anything else here. Because sure. we wanted to, obviously, a year in review, we wanted to try and go over a bunch of the stuff that had happened. For real. And... Um, this one, be, even though it's the most recent, I think it's probably the most relevant to the whole the whole idea of the year in review, Wait, you know? Be, you began with Call of Cthulhu exactly. and ended with it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel like um, we all walked away from playing it so fucking satisfied with the insane the part, shit that we had told. The best part, we did it We did it on a whim the, the week, exactly a week prior to yeah. recording it. Yeah, we had, I spent all week creating that. Is All fucking week. amazing, and it and it turned into this thing. Where it was like, wait, should we do something like this? And yeah. just literally, like, yeah, we'll we'll do it next week. And that's what came out of it. And it was like, are you going to publish it? Are you going to put it up on the website so other people can play it? Um, it was well, it was me transferring a second edition. Okay, that's good. That's another. Hey, that's good a point. good point. Yeah, is um, Sundown was a second edition, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong out there, but like it was the second edition module intended to be run at conventions. But uh, I don't remember the guy who wrote it, so sorry. Uh, But yeah, I just converted it to 7th edition, which took very little, Um, which is actually an interesting talking point about Call of Cthulhu itself, is that um, it's compatible, 7th edition is compatible with every previous edition. And the conversion is simple. A lot of times it's just multiply by five. So um, that's incredibly simple, because the stats were just were done differently. And you have high numbers here, and they weren't there. it's it's yeah it's exactly divisible by five going backwards so it was easy to convert. Um, I also just changed every person's name to something of our own, and um, which allows me to make those connections with people in other campaigns. Because then you give someone the same last name, like your character for example, Vegas Jones, you know, based off Nevada Jones, he was his father, right? Because right. the time frame worked out perfectly for it. Absolutely. Um, and then like there was even. Um, the, the preacher in town, his last name was uh, oh, Cochran. Cochran. Father yeah. Co- much like uh, Jesse. Jesse. Yeah. Or, well, Jesse was actually Phil. Phil. Phil Cochran. Yeah, and that was his father as well. And then, of course, Director Smith, who, yeah, he has existed at this point for over over 100 years. And that that's the other thing, too. Obviously, because we record these things um, far before we put them out. I haven't edited it yet, so I don't know exactly what I'm doing with that last moment right. yet. Oh, good point. Because I know that I say Tom consistently through the encounter, and I think you say something about Sheriff Smith, maybe, yeah. or whatever. Sheriff Smith is Director Smith. So yeah. so I'm sure that like it's an easy parallel to draw if you're listening to it, obviously, with everything else that happens to in there. And now it's clarified. Yeah, but <laughs> verified. right away while you were given the, when you were given the yeah. intro, you described the sheriff, and for whatever reason, because I'm just like... It's like, oh, everything is something. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, the sheriff's like an um, older gentleman with a white mustache and yep. shit like that. I was just like, fucking, sounds like Director Smith to me. Yeah. I was actually describing uh, Sam Elliott. Yeah, yeah. well, that's actually. <laughs> but the description, as little of it as I gave, fit for both people. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? That's a fucking great idea. Which proves that, you know, we, we do build this canon together. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, I very, um, I very much like that because there's a lot of that stuff like we still don't know anything about like what that is. You yeah. probably do. No, and uh, I... If you want to know more about Smith, you'll find out. You Okay, I'll tell you one thing. And this is a spoiler for everybody oh, at the table. Oh, give it to me, daddy. Yeah, it's a spoiler for everybody <laughs> at the table and everybody listening that the truth about Director Smith, about Tom Smith. Nate, will be out. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> will be revealed in City of Mist. Ooh. Oh my God! Oh my God. Because oh my God. I'm thinking of making City of Mist not in the canonical city that it the game runs in, sure, sure, but actually making it in a future version of White Hills. Oh, that man. is a little bit bigger than it is. Or maybe I might go for Vegas. I'm Ooh, thinking maybe it's Vegas. Fucking moist in here. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, so that's that's my plan for that. Is City of Mist. I wanted to continue the D-Pick story for that, 
well, it's a little ways out. It's it's in our um, extended queue, but it's you know it's, creep, hey, man. it's creeping closer because right now we're playing Starfinder, and that's another thing we should point out is I remember a while ago, a few episodes back, we like on a, on a review. I think it was the end of the Monster of the Week review. We laid out a roadmap of what we were going to be. Yeah, doing. and everything's always. And good. we what have the been changing the roadmap. This is EA. <laughs> well, okay, uh, uh, it's not though. That's it's better than that. <laughs> that's terrible. Ter- don't compare us to that. No. Um, yeah, and we and we, ha- we laid out a roadmap, and we have not stuck to it, and that's fine. Um, it's fluid, but, but the reasons being, like Apocalypse Keys came out of nowhere for us because it was an opportunity to play test a game. We jumped at it. Yes. Um, Starfinder. We had a listener. Uh, shout out to Jack. Uh, he rec- uh, he actually requested that we play Starfinder, and we're like, fuck, we're jumping on it. So a, a listener request. The only one we've ever had, we're going to jump on it. Right. So as soon as we were done with Apocalypse Keys, we jumped right into Starfinder, and that's what we're currently at, as you know, yes. um, which will continue next week. Absolutely. After that, I think we're we're kind of up in the air as far as that goes, but um, we're gonna, we might take a little bit of a break. We might not. You'll find out when it happens or when it doesn't yeah. happen. But That's usually how it works. That's exactly how it's going to work. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> and, uh, find out when I tell you. Exactly. Well, that's kind of it, because uh, we're not really sure yet either. But... Um, we're think we're still thinking of Lancer, okay, and then I think we're moving on to Merc Borg. We might do something. Merc we're definitely going to play Merc Borg at some point, but we might. I'm we ha- we have some one. possibilities, and yet you'll find out when you find out because we don't know either, <laughs> right? Uh, but then we're, we're, we're also thinking maybe Alien still, uh, yes. Blades in the Dark, these will, and these then I'm will thinking City games, of Mist. for sure. I think for no matter what, these are all games that we're going to play uh, eventually. Yeah, more than anything, we'll just decide what we feel like, uh, what kind of like genre or game mm-hmm. setting that feels like either familiar enough or new enough in whatever um, yeah. way that we want to go about it, and. If you guys have any suggestions at all, let us know, and yes. that's that will be the way that we lean, regardless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, literally, anybody who says anything at all about what game to play next is likely the game we're Somebody playing. Somebody should next. have something where they can vote and maybe a poll. Our website, yeah, a hey, poll. <laughs> our, our website at theroldstandard.com. dot com. You we can go check that? it out. We have yeah. that. Yes, it's a great <laughs> plug. Thank you. No, we have theroldstandard.com, dot com. One whole word. And uh, is that a poll. email still around? What email? It sure is. You well, can email us at the rolled standard gang at gmail.com. <laughs> that is correct. Yes, wow, you can email us there. Flashback. That wasn't just a clip poll either. No, that was Aaron saying that for real. It real beautiful. Time. And that's true. Everyone's like, yeah, Shift no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, um Boy, that Levi's getting good, really good at voice acting. <laughs> yeah. Sound just like Aaron. But no, uh <laughs> just not as good. There is a poll at our website. Your gut voice. Um <laughs> and yeah, uh it's it's a fill in the blank style. So you type in a game, there's also others that Hopefully, people have recommended. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, go check it out. Uh, that'll run till the end of the year, and then that'll give us some fodder—not fodder, but you know, some equipment or equipment material <laughs> for uh, for for the future, I guess. So whatever. Yeah. Regardless, uh, it's and Chris put a lot of hard work into it. Yeah. And this also, is... a lot of our poster art that he's been doing is on there, and it's gonna. Oh my yeah. god. No, I I decided to just kind of dig in with the whole thing oh. and uh, just. I spend majority of my day because I work I work nights, um, but I or evenings. Um, but I spend majority of my day watching my one year old walk around, and <laughs> uh, and um, try to get uh, work done on a computer, which is literally building the website, which is that's out there and that's been running for a while. That's looks nice. Go check it out. The Yeah. Um, and uh, making our, our cover art. Yeah. Which um that has been a beautiful learning experience. Just learning like Photoshop and. I, w- I would love to have, like, all of that cover art on, like, a disc plate. Yeah, and if you guys would like that, uh, let us know. You, Hey, you want, if there's something you want, T-shirts, like, you want some rolled standard shirts, you want that, you want that uh, moon cabbage T-shirt, <laughs> I have a perfect <laughs> idea, and respond to this. Like, if you guys like this idea, give us a, give us a hell yeah, like Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> no, don't do that. Uh, I'm, I'm really thinking about a, a moon cabbage farm shirt. Oh, kind of like the man. shrewd farm shirt. Oh, you know? man. Just a, an old just farmer a... holding on to his suspenders with a pitchfork, him looking at the at the sunset with a bunch of moon cabbage. It's like in three, the field. three sun setting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's great. Ooh, he's got a little astronaut like helmet. Oh, uh, you could. On. That's very nice. Just I, could, I would love to see that thing fucking. Mm. Yeah. I was just thinking, you know, like green on brown. Man, I just, I want shirts just for myself. I don't give a shit. Um, there's definitely, I can't remember what it was. Uh, I don't know if it was just like a reoccurring bit or a reoccurring line, but there was definitely something half, I remember feeling that halfway through the 
last Call of Cthulhu thing that we did that I was just like, oh man, I'm gonna need a t-shirt <laughs> for this. Oh, I, re I remember you saying something. I wish I could remember what. I it don't was. know, but I definitely remember like if it came to. I'm pretty sure I said it. If it if it came to a rule of threes, the only thing that I maintained, which is actually still one of my favorite things, not because of what I was doing about it, but it oh, was like did. about the synner the synergy of the group while we were doing it. It just it, like this unspoken thing where like we're all arguing and everybody is like aware that it's all in character. And then I fire a gun off in the air and everybody stops. That was great. And then I, I all I had I to do realize. after that was two more times <laughs> mime me putting yeah. my gun in the air and it all stopped. It was just yeah. like, this is the most beautiful fucking thing. I like, this is so Dude, that's when great. you know we're immersed. Dude, like, that's, oh, that's, that's what you want. Absolutely. Well, that's because the goddamn game was like, that's one was, of the most immersive games I've ever played. Yeah, it's weird. Yo, when it's it got, dude, weird. okay, if we're going to go over like how the game felt, yeah. It was like, oh man, this is so fun to play these characters. It's so great. Dust storm comes. I'm like, sweet, very cool. Twelve seconds later, hoofs <laughs> to the eyeballs, <laughs> just getting pummeled by a Clydesdale. <laughs> I, have a, I have no chance of survival. I'm just like, no. I don't know what you're talking man. about. When, when that happened, Good I had old bell no clue mean. you got hurt. That bad. No. I had no clue. Yeah, you only took one damage. Probably. Yeah, I'm like, oh shit, he's bitching about one damage. You took four. Yes. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, nearly <laughs> half of my health, and it makes me laugh so hard. See, only because of the fact that like Nevada had prefaced this same. Show Shit, by like just tripping into damage and then just went worth fucking yep. his day up with it and and me as i listened to to those episodes like a few times yeah. so i remembered and i'm like oh my god we're playing i'm putting if it's a western i know for sure that chris is gonna send us on some sort of crazy horse ride or some shit and then you ask for horse names and i'm like yep and then i got the sheet i'm like animal handling horse riding yeah, that's those are getting a, a, a bonus there. Those are definitely getting a bonus. Oh, riding, yeah. S save me, save me. Ride skill, yep. Bella yeah. was the best horse out of all of them. They, that's true. Yeah, the Jones family. Has, it was the one that. Uh, then you tried to steal them. Had terrible. She tried luck. to steal Bella. I didn't take horse oh. riding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. It rolled on over twenty five percent the whole time. That's ridiculous to think, though, that like these two characters who exist in a world where you ride horses if you're going anywhere are not can't ride horses. Well, yeah. I am the best bounty hunter. So. <laughs> oh my it, it, fucking it doesn't god! Doesn't make any sense. That whole the worst bit, bounty hunter. That no, whole no. bit. That whole bit. I'm made the me best laugh in town. So fucking hard. You're like I brought in ten people. And I'm he's, the, and, I brought and in ten customers. He didn't even. Chris didn't even turn. He just like made eye contact with Jake and I, and he's like. This is why we don't hire. <laughs> <laughs> I just could not. I could not handle. Not only that, but like, if there was any way for you to prove him wrong, it wouldn't be to chase a rabbit around with a bull whip. Right. For, but <laughs> and fail horribly. If you remember, I, I I was referring to an old lady I brought in. At one point. Yep. <laughs> you did. So so speaking of like. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of like good bits, the Paul is that Paul part Paul, of the lineage of Pauls throughout the universe? There's always, that are a, Paul? Yeah, there's always a Paul. There's always a Paul. So he, uh, he, sorry, Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm like I'm I'm talking like there's no mics again. It's weird because I'm not sitting directly. It's I don't feel at home right now. You'll be fine. <laughs> I know. Fault. I'm sorry. I apologize. You can get so, on my mic, Big Daddy. Oh God! No, no, Aaron, one, no, no one's comfortable. Aaron, <laughs> Aaron met the first Paul. You did. He was the one that the first asked, canonical he, Paul. He the was the Paul. one that made sure that we got the name. He's the one that started that bit. He made sure he got Gribble's name in the very beginning. Yeah, and then I, we were having the argument where I was just like, "What's the next one's name?" Uh, or no, no, it's a. Uh, it was Gribble, uh, Grabble, and then Paul. I can't remember. Yeah, right? it was just like the, we asked if the third one was going to be Grubble. Yeah, yeah. Well, how much do you guys want to bet that this last name is Grubble? Let's see how this so goes. And then Paul's it's like, oh, he's lineage? helping you up. It's like, hey, you're like, hey, what's your name, friend? He's like, Paul. <laughs> he was the first Paul. Yeah, I actually, kind he of like I forgot about him to be honest. I'm, right, right. Yeah, I'm telling you. So he, you were. Aaron, you were the birth of the Pauls. Your lineage, even though you may not be on the mic with us every time, you live on through Paul. <laughs> not only that, but especially Paul has sprung fully formed from my loins. <laughs> oh my God! Actually, is that he sprang oh, fully formed from Jebediah's oh, loins? I was just gonna say Jebediah has a monocle, and then he just winks. He's Wentworth, the bastard son that he <laughs> oh, sold to no. Oberon. Oh, oh no! He had to get rid of him because he had a problem. He, 
because he had sex with a gnomish woman and oh. made Jebediah, and there's no world he could live in. Oh, there's no, nothing that's... wrong with gnomish women, them beers. You know, they tickle you in all the right spots. Oh, shit. <laughs> that's canonical is, now. It, yeah, is that canon? Well, yeah. When, well, I mean... I, I would say yes. He had he had Steve with, uh, with, with the with the housekeeper with the housekeeper. I mean, oh yeah, yep, yep. I forgot actually. Yeah, Steve is Wentworth's son. What? He's got bastard children left and right. I I overlooked that. I did not know. He, that. Yeah, well, Steve true. is the only one that he ever acknowledged, but not even in a way where I think did Steve Steve never knew. No. Steve never knew. Not a clue. He was his protege, but I think it was all, like if you think about it as a story, like as a timeline, kind of. Um, it makes so much sense because he's so old at that time already that it's like, why would I fucking tell him this? Why would I ever tell him this? Dude, it's like Damien Wayne not knowing that Bruce Wayne is his dad. Dude, for sure. Oh, it's like, yeah. just like that. Oh, man. And it's like this protege apprentice thing. And like, they still get to have a kind of like a moment in that way. It's, it's, it's so weird, but it's so. It's a mentorship. Yeah. It's, it's kind of poetic because Wentworth is a bastard, but he made himself yeah. a little bit less of a bastard. It's interesting to me the connections that we decide to make and like and somehow how it affects the characters over time. Yeah, absolutely. I I very much love that shit. Again, I told uh, I told Aaron about this before, but like if we're talking about strange, even just Easter eggy connections and stuff like that, one of my favorites, maybe just because it's like so early on in me being uh, terrified to have to run something for you guys and stuff, but when uh, Chase in Apocalypse Keys uses his powers to summon forth his mentor. Yeah. I was just like, oh, cool. I literally just described a guy because you, it's just like you kind of just gave me a moment to start going on. And I was like, mm-hmm. sweet. So I described a guy in a nice tailored suit and all this kind of shit and whatever. He walks out of the wall and lights a ghostly cigarette and whatever. And then like the next moment, he's just like, Wentworth. I was like, fuck, what do I do now? And he's just like, you look more and more like your grandfather all the time. And I was like, oh, my God, you fucking. You, his old rope I and dope. I forgot about that. <laughs> the old rope and dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, yeah. I like, I like, 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 you need the curveballs. Oh, man. It's just so, I mean, I don't know. There's so much of that stuff that lives on. Not only that, but, like, more off the mic than anything. Wentworth uh, lives in our lives in our chat as, like, the pinnacle <laughs> of, of character <laughs> creation. That's true, actually. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Whenever we talk about, like. The best of anything is I was like, well, Wentworth is obviously the best character. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> the it's... best part is I fucking hate Wentworth. I know you do. No, <laughs> that is the best part. You're right. asshole, <laughs> and he plays himself. It's it's so good because of that fact. Like, there are very few of the characters that we play as that are unabashedly assholes. <laughs> Chase, Chase didn't realize he was. John no. wasn't an asshole. No, but like... No. But John even, wasn't an even at the end no. of Even at the end of what John and uh, Chase were, you know... They never ended as assholes, even if they f- seemed like, like John yeah. did some fucked up shit. Chase was kind of a uh, distracted. Oh, hold up! What idiot. kind of fucked up shit? It, Getting lost in a cow field does not count uh, as fucked up. No, no. Getting eggs from the jazz club doesn't count as fucked up. <laughs> it doesn't. All right. It, it's it, not riding it's not, the tentacles not of an John's elder god fault. like a horse. Is it's not. not as, <laughs> it's not John's fault that there were eggs at a jazz club. Uh, okay. Sure, well, I mean, fault. what about putting my 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 brother's dog in the back of a fucking black car in the middle of the summer and? He doesn't know how to handle dogs. It was the 60s. I've never had an animal. <laughs> Nobody that knew. fucking dog shit in my car? <laughs> no. No, 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 Oh, man, did you finish Monster of the Week? Oh, you have I no did. idea what I happened did. to oh, your car. Oh, my gosh. God. All right, oh my so. God. You might um, this be, is so to beautiful. My car. You might want to rem- remain sitting down for this, Aaron. Stand um, up and sit down real quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Get that blood flowing. Yeah, stand up. Okay, now you're going to want to be seated for this. No, uh, so. Uh, I won't even. Um, he just, did it. Just he did it. I was just going to say. <laughs> Nate did it. James did everything. James <laughs> rolled your car on a rainy day because he was trying to like, you fucking. You fucking drunk bastard. It wasn't even that. He wasn't even drunk. <laughs> but that was he the did best drink. Part. He was drinking. Yeah. He was I, drinking. Oh, no, he I had took a sip. one sip he of scotch. He had one sip before he threw that glass. It was, he it was, was the drunk it one. It was three fingers. Yeah, I, John was <laughs> fucked up. Three fingers. Let that be a lesson to you children. Don't drink and drive. That's true. Yeah, or else your truck sip. gets wrecked it's, what is over it, the one, weekend. What is it, one hour <laughs> right. per drink? I don't know. Yes. It is. <laughs> yes. I don't drink. One yes. drink per hour, yeah. <laughs> That's it, why I don't drive a manual transmission, because it's impossible to drink, drive, and smoke. I've yes. done that. Too many hands. Oh, uh, well. Well, you, you drink Monster, <laughs> yeah. you drive with your knees, you shift yeah. gears with the other hand, and you yeah. just keep the cigarette in your mouth. <laughs> oh, okay. Man. I don't think this would be any defense, and I'm definitely not making excuses for a character that I created, but... Because you don't know, and since we're reviewing everything anyway, fair enough. 
when it came down to finding Steven, finding Steven became the pinnacle of like this weird change in how, I mean, obviously the show changed because you were gone. Obviously. We added a Levi. And, and we added a Levi Hello. and we didn't want to, <laughs> and we didn't want that to feel like this weird, uncomfortable thing, but like we just did one episode after that where it was just Jake and I and I don't know. It was like an episode of Supernatural, which that is was actually. A weird it's like one. The, I don't know what you're talking about. The strangest, the strangest thing about it, since Monster of the Week is literally named after shit like Supernatural. Yeah, you know. It was the episode where Dean wasn't there. It's like it's like the weird <laughs> episodes, like where where Sam is stuck in a fucking like Groundhog's Day or something. Like one, it has nothing to do with whatever the fuck else is going on. Like like the original uh, episodes used to be, uh, but it was so fucking strange because nothing else was happening. We, we did this narrative thing and it turned into like a, such a great episode of us to kind of dealing with what the fuck was going on because we had no clues, no leads. The whole episode was like a setup to a day. It was a morning. Yeah. And it was just like you go down to the bar and I'm just like struggling to figure out what's going on with this odd Superman. And then he goes on an adventure that I am not present for and I literally, I just, I get to sit here and watch Chris and Jake play narrative tennis for a while, and then it cuts back to me where I'm just like, he went out to the car for eggs. Uh, there's no eggs in that car. <laughs> and he's been gone for 20 minutes, so I don't think he's still looking in the car. <laughs> like, do you know anywhere that he could find eggs? And I literally, we just have a small conversation, and then it cuts back to John, who had just got hit by a car and nearly got hit by another car trying to save a dog. And it wasn't that bad. No, it wasn't. But the, the crazy Zero thing. Zero harm. I think the crazy thing about. I've done this in about, real life. <laughs> the crazy thing about the episode is just this weird. I don't know. It felt like uh, it wasn't the show that was falling apart. It was the characters yeah. trying to deal with whatever the fuck was going on. So what happened to my car? I, 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 <laughs> I mean, this is what point. I was saying. This is what I'm saying. I'm slowly building to that. No, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Like there was a whole, em like us as characters, there was a lot of emotion that got shoved into the characters, right? Because we also didn't know how to do this. Like we were, we were all pretty confused on how things were going to work out. You know, it's, it's a, it was a weird transition, well, but now, now we're all the way back here, fucking uh, whatever day it is in real life. And then a year for the anniversary <laughs> thing. Yeah. And well, yeah. Uh, yeah, it all worked out. Well, well, well it's it's crazy because like it, it was almost like Steve was the translator between John and James for a long while. In a way, yeah, it, like um, emotional translator or whatever. And then the episode where nobody else was there, we separated. <laughs> and yeah. then the next episode, we separate again. And then a young boy shows up on a noisy Indian motorcycle. Oh, and, and Levi had no idea who he was meeting because that shit, that cra John's craziness had not been aired yet or something. I like think that. we were like in the very you beginning had no of Fake idea. Core. Oh, personally, he had no idea. Yes, yeah. personally. Uh, I think Levi was in the beginning of listening to Fake Core. And I didn't know that either. So I thought you were prepared for John's craziness the whole time. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> so that whole in interaction, like if you go back and listen and, and considering what, what you know now <laughs> and what we know now, that interaction is genuine. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That was very good. Yeah. Uh, Levi's panic. He even drops Functional their names yeah. and I counter it with Regina. Right. No, we're John and Regina. <laughs> the, way that he, the way that he played Hugh as a character, though, was interesting because his newness to role playing games, a nervousness to be on the show, and like coming up with another, a new character right on the spot to like match what we're doing, perfectly reflected in the character. Because it's like no matter whether his his um, like I never needed to know whether or not your your anxiety was genuine or not as the character or you because it was it all f helped flow so seamlessly and it's weird because there's a poetry to the the whole thing that happens with Huey because he became like kind of a a glue or or like a band aid on this wound that we had dealt with. He's the new puppy. Your kid died. <laughs> kind no, of. Regina was still there. Oh, oh right. I would have saved yep. Regina over. He's a new kid when your kid. What died. happened to the dog? The Nothing. Dog? John. John still. Well, had, had the dog him. wasn't genetically modified from semen, so he does. He um, does say in a. Um, he does say when he's an old man, like in his nineties and shit like that, uh, that he's had multiple Reginas. Yeah. Oh. 
I are, I are they that. clones or are they successive generations of Regina? I think uh, Regina. Would that Regina. Be? <laughs> uh, from, from what I took from it, you found all these dogs and you just named them Regina. <laughs> no, I, 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 I left it open ended, but I did. I did consider that he would just go to the D pick, considering that he's now the best agent after being mind touched. If it came to a person that needed something cloned. Yeah, I figured he just went back and was like, clone this fucking dog and also add some of this. Do it now. It's all I have left. It's what? My, it's Nothing. Mine. Just clone so, it. Yeah. So Regina yes. went back to being like an oversized wolf poodle from from like early on ages. Went back when poodle poodles like were just dangerous. Oh, yeah, just crazy. bear hunters? Yeah. So Regina Shoot. eventually was like one of those bear hunter dogs. That's beautiful. Nice. Um, unfortunately. We got to play a fucking game. What was what was the name of that lake again? Uh, a so, Silver Lake. Yeah. We need to play a game where it's like kids in Silver Lake, like local kids, those kids. Even. Kids on bikes. Kids on bikes. Yeah, that's a great one. Uh, where they're like, there's like a werewolf or something in the woods, or some kind of monster in the woods, and that's it's 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 Regina. Oh, it's, a, it's a Halloween shit. episode. Oh. It could be, but that's all not, right. Not this year. All right, <laughs> we do have to let Aaron know what happened to his car. Yes, I know. Yes, it was. It good. was bad. Yes. It was um, so bad. So what? Well, what? Well, what all this gets to really is that like Huey became this like glue that helped get us together because it was literally about finding Steve. Everything became about finding Steve because he was. Uh, so is it safe to say that Stephen filled a void in your life? Uh yeah. <sighs> Left a void in their life, <laughs> and Huey filled it. <laughs> I didn't know Steve. Oh. No, uh, yeah, yeah, he was um, he was taken, and we had to figure out what to do. And you know, D pick works in threes. That's actually where the the whole I think the whole thing started. Yeah. Oh, uh, where where it was kind of like became canonically a rule for the department. Yep. Um, even even into Apocalypse Keys with the division. Yeah, exactly. And then um, the episode where it gets to be. The, I think the craziest and the fu- the most fun of the dynamic is the one where your car gets destroyed oh because James isn't there for 60% of the episode. Yeah, it's crazy John and new boy Huey. Yeah, John going insane, uh, like trying to figure shit out. He's and threatening then, a man and just and just mumbling, I-, I need to find my friends. Yeah, it's, so. it's just insane. <laughs> And uh, eventually gets to the point where <laughs> James finally makes it to where they are, which happens to be the police chief's house. And he's in with the dudes that kidnapped Steve. So he brings dudes in to come beat the shit out of us while John is in the shower at the police chief's house because he just chugged down a bunch of fucking scotch. Yeah. And then threw he's up like, or... oh, he's oh, like, oh, throw up. He never threw up, did he? I uh, I may or may not have thrown up near th- at the end of the fight because I do remember mentioning like I feel like I need to throw up. I can't remember. I, yeah, yeah, I haven't listened to Monsters. I really should have just had before we started this. Aaron listened to the clip show because that would have given him a lot of key moments, especially of this, because it's like where John gets out of the shower and he's completely naked and he comes in, out to fight these guys and shit and he's just like John. I feel like John gets out of the shower and he <laughs> takes a look around. Uh, what's most vulnerable to me? Or he's like he comes out of the shower, dick and balls hanging out. <laughs> I'm gonna take a look around. What's most vulnerable to me? And I wasn't even looking at him. I was looking at something else and it was like a throwaway line. I was like, you're, like di- "You're your dick, dick and balls." balls. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <laughs> while we're fighting with these guys, the police chief and his wife uh, try to peel off in the car. And I had Steve's vehicle, of course. So I tried to chase them down and pit maneuver them. And I failed terribly on the roll. You did. And I had an option to not do that and let them go or succeed and deal with the consequences of that. Yep. And I felt like if the police chief gets back to the fucking police station and I just let it go... Everything that we do in this investigation from here on out is so much harder. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, fuck. I'm sorry, Steve. And I just flipped the car. I, I had to go, eventually had to go to the fucking impound lot and like pull our Sam and Dean trunk of fucking weapons <laughs> out. And like, yeah. uh, no, these guys did because yep. I got kidnapped after the fucking car wrecked. The, the beginning of the next episode, I was hanging upside down in the car and. Same dude that took you came and took me as well. Same building, different areas oh. of it. That no. dude. Wasn't the same guy. What? Hmm. No, wasn't the same guy. Oh, that's interesting information. That's another one of those loose ends that I always, I forgot to ask about in the review for Monster of the Week, but it was something I wanted to like try and clear up and I forgot about it. I, I would love either way if you told us or you're just like, fuck you. 
Do you know what happened to that dude? The guy? I can't remember his fucking name. Yes. The dude in black with the the raven pin and yes. shit. The Order of the Raven? Yes. Or the Brotherhood of the Raven? What a mysterious character. I yeah. fucking loved that guy. Those guys. John got to are, are, first and he has see. no fucking idea. Uh, I have plans. That's beautiful. Oh, because fuck. Come on. I have plans. See, those are those are play the, to find out. Yeah, the, <laughs> that's those, what I do every every week. Those then are, it shouldn't be new. <laughs> oh. Those are the 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 loose ends that I love to have. Yep. Just just like well, that, those gives me seeds for new adventures. Oh yeah, like or, any or of stories. the weird cliffhangers that we end stuff with. Like mm-hmm. Apocalypse Keys is one of them that we did. Uh, yep, Numa, I Numenera. have an idea for that one too. Numenera is a perfect example of that kind of stuff. Uh, Monster of the Week we came back to in a weird way, obviously, and we were like wrapping up those stories. Yep. Well, Numenera was weird because we are canonical in that as a, just a podcast. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, oh, that's shit. the other yeah, thing. That's right. Oh, yeah. oh man. Oh. I, you made another episode. Yeah. Techn- Did you play a clip into that clip? Yes, it's in the very back of everything. I thought so. Okay, I thought so. But um, that one's one that was, that was cool, too, talking about... Uh, I mean, Numenera is a cool ass game, no matter yeah. what. It's uh, very fun to play, Holy especially fuck, yeah. after we finally figured it out. Yes. Um, but... I, I do love the the ways that Chris just has to turn a dial just a little bit to make something make sense in the most ridiculous way sometimes. And Numenera is the perfect version of that, where it's like uh, at the end of an episode, he has somebody yell, don't sniff glue at us. But canonically, the creatures that did so can't speak. Yeah. And that was just something we f- he figured out. I, or remembered later, or whatever it was, right? You Didn't know? know when I said it. Yeah. Then in prep for the next week, I, I, I read that, and I was like, ooh, I have to change that. So so he just starts doing narration the next the next episode that was just, like, going on about, like, <laughs> you're hearing, like, um, a music that comes in that's like, dee, 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 or, you know, and I just started playing the music, like, quietly behind him <laughs> yeah, while he yeah. did it. And then just he explains the intro and whatever, and we're just like, oh, my God, this is the most meta shit in the world. Yeah. When he starts ex- describing the item that it comes on, was, or like this stuff is coming out of, I was just like, "Oh my god, this is the perfect fucking game for you to have had like this as your." Because yeah. Numenera, technically, if you don't know, is like the name of items from the past that are un- Un-no- unknowable. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the ninth world, right? And the world we currently live in on Earth is their first world still. So, like all these civilizations, humanity has risen and fallen nine times. Right, so or eight times technically, and all the relics of the past exist, but are unknown in function to the people who find them. Right, so you find like a boombox, but you think it's some weird like sonic weapon device thing. You don't know what it is because it's weird. So they found uh, an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that uh, that was playing that. They would just had that on there. It was downloaded on there, right? So they were just playing it, and that was it. They didn't know what it was though, but they that's what it, they were. And I was explaining like the buttons on the screen, <laughs> so yeah, the triangle. And yeah, shit. yeah. No, it was it was ridiculous. It, it's it's funny to make something like a gratuitous explanation of something that's obvious. Yeah. Um, turn like, into like the watch. T- t- yeah, turn into something that becomes a like Umbris's fucking explanation of what it was. Uh, uh what the watch was specifically just fucked me up so bad. Like, like in my, ice. I made me laugh so. <laughs> oh fucking, no! Where, where he's talking about like, I know what this is. It's a tracker for ladies. <laughs> oh, God. So you can know that time of the month. I was like, Jesus oh, Christ, right, this say is that. fucking amazing. Because he's like, per- menstrual cycle. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I remember that. Uh. <laughs> and then the and then the iPhone was also like, not the iPhone itself, but the podcast. He starts fucking. He's like, I know what this is. The people of the past used to pretend they were characters to make them feel better about themselves. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> couldn't do it, dude. That was good, yeah. It's just like the meta conference, like, it sounds like psychosis to me. It's like, yeah, it's oh, fucking God. pretty close to that. And then it led into fucking, uh, God damn it, um, mind control. Mind control yeah. for armies. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it might uh, have been no, a military. No, 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 they used this to, you know, I feel like this might have been a place for armies. This is This was used for mind Mind control. You know, you trick them into thinking that they're, you know, another watching TV. Another person. It's uh, John Cena. TV. Yeah, John Cena. You ever heard of him? 
Turns out he died in this weird Shut accident. Up. <laughs> okay. Wait. What? Can never explain that. No, you nope. can't explain. There is it. an explanation. Nope. We'll maybe get back maybe one to day. that. Maybe in the tenth world. <laughs> maybe in, in in City of Mist. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, all of the things. No, because they all just... oh, we could. Because I was I was planning on putting City of Mist in like the near future. Oh. The past twenty twenty five. Oh my god. <laughs> right. So we could explain what happened to John Cena. <laughs> just, just the real John Cena. Just the a rest just a a soft recording in the background that sounds like a TV. Unit. Oh yeah. But it's, oh. But a it's real you. hidden Easter egg. Right, that's as, a badass idea. I'm right, as, as, that. as you, as a news anchor, breaking news. <laughs> no, that's perfect. <laughs> at, at the fucking oh, no, WrestleMania can, fucking no, 94. You could literally be the announcers or the, the, the commentators. The announcer. Yeah, yeah oh, it's like a God. short clip. <laughs> Today in history, we remember uh, a couple years ago, John Cena died, and it plays a short clip. Or no, I was cause, thinking cause the commentators doesn't give at the a moment it's anymore. happening. Yeah. Oh, oh wow, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. About to. Oh, my God. Oh no! Well, you can't put this in now. I. <laughs> okay, now that you don't know what happened to John Cena, we're gonna take a break here, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to the World Standard. Uh, we just came back from a break. I'm not, it's not the beginning of the episode. And we don't remember where we left off. We don't. So let's <laughs> move on. Then. Um. I have me a cream soda. So we, we we talked a lot about Monsters of the Week just now, and we have beat that to death or previously. Yeah, we beat off that dead horse. We have, and he's, oh. he's, he's satisfied. We're, we can move on. <laughs> no, so <laughs> well, we, we did play you. three games before that. We played Call of Cthulhu originally, and we talked about that. We absolutely loved that. Oh, man, especially the in the review. We talked about shit that wasn't even part of that. Yeah, like, and was... actually, that was one of the hardest things that we've ever had to deal with in our entire job with this was we lost the original... Um, review of, Apoc- of, of, of of Call of Cthulhu, and that was supposed to be our third episode, but if you look back, a review is actually the uh, sixth episode? Sixth, I think. Yeah, because we decided to play Edge of Darkness, um, the three of us, and actually we recorded that after Jake came in with Fate Core. And actually, we were already into Monster of the Week for a little bit when we decided to jump back and get sure, this in there. Sure, yeah, you because can we tell, were ahead of ourselves. You can you can tell in the recordings because we 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 make jokes about like, oh, the, that's a reference for literally mm-hmm. the future or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but can you uh, tell me who? Because this is actually, I think it's uh, a little a little bit of uh, credit to the person who asked us because we only had one person ask us any questions about this. Uh, oh, right, yeah. Um, I I put my feelers out to Reddit earlier today to uh, ask just because. Basically, what kind of things we should cover in this episode as our review, as a year in review. So, fortunately, somebody responded. Uh, a guy whose Reddit handle, or if you want to call it that, yeah. is Night Terrors Pod. <laughs> uh, don't know who he is. Uh, very cool, though. He actually asked uh, to hear about what obstacles we overcame, even some small stuff. And he congratulated us, which we appreciate. So, thank you, yes. uh, Night Terrors Pod. And if that's an actual podcast, I'm actually going to check that out after we're done here. Just yeah, it I, sounds I, very cool. Just I, the yeah. name alone, I love it. Night Terrors, come on. Absolutely, but uh, yeah, that's it's a it's a really that good. That was my band in college. Oh god, dude, that's my fucking bit. How that dare is you? Yeah. I'm not good with spooky, <laughs> so you check it out first. Let me know if it's spooky. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is. Either way, <laughs> um, that was our biggest obstacle. Actually, was was losing that uh, losing the episode, it, and, and, I, and we just we just took it in stride and moved on. Well, we I think again. realistically, I think uh, it became our biggest obstacle and our biggest boon at the same time because before that, our original idea was to cover as many bases as we could all the time, we were going to try and put together one shots for us to do and then review them so it'd be one for one. It'd be one week a episode, one week a review. That's right. I remember that. That was early. Oh, God, that was back. I cried. That was Zoom meeting days. Yes. When we were talking about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Zoom meeting with no camera. Yeah. Right. Just it was like, just me. It was just Chris, Nate, and Aaron. Yep. Beginning of the pandemic, had no idea what the fuck was going on. It was great though. It worked out great. Um, well, yeah. that 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 moment was was I kind was of in the mountains. You were you were even back then. It was kind of integral to how we wanted to do it because, um, like we've said multiple times in the past, we record a lot of this stuff weeks ahead. We actually have we we started with a ten week lead. Yes. Um, and we now have like a seven. Well, that all. Sorry. That all. That's all right. <laughs> it's partially you. And that, <laughs> and two times. And <laughs> two out of yeah, actually yeah. And then one was just a week off. That that was always going to be kind of the precedent but we didn't know what we were going to do when we lost the review originally right it just disappeared i have no idea what happened to it and we were kind of lost so when we got into fate core and i was looking into the files i was like i don't know all this is gone we're gonna have to take a week and go back and do this we decided instead that if chris aaron and i got the chance 
we would take an extra day sometime during the week and sit down and record a couple of extra things of Call of Cthulhu. And it became one of the coolest things that we decided to do. One, because it continued a story past one episode and it became true. the precedent right there. That's Otherwise, true. we would have been, honestly, I feel like now knowing this, we would have struggled with so many things, you know? Well, we would have, we'd be reviewing games that we didn't take enough time to learn. No, of course and, not. and we've already done that. We technically Honestly. have. Yeah, I mean, we moved on with Fate Core very quickly. Yes, Because we, we just, we weren't digging it, really. Yeah. Oh, and well, the story I had was two episodes, and we did it. And then it's like, should we continue this? And, it's like, and nah. I didn't know what I was doing. No, and none of us really did with that game, because that game was very foreign in concept. Just the no. mechanics were so open and broad that we just... It, I, I prefer a little bit more mechanical guidance. Right, and actually that brings us into, like, Apocalypse Keys as well, like, as something that's more recent and... Um, equally less familiar to Aaron, it it brings us back maybe like to our bias as as um, reviewers or characters, uh, re reviewers or tabletop players, rather. We are that characters. We, yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, you can tell already at this point a year in that we have a little bit of a bias toward um, a more structured mechanical system. Now, this doesn't mean that that's always going to be what the game is determines that. I, I'm not going to say that just because something is far more free form, it's going to be worse for us. Right, right. There might be some that are just exactly what we want it. Right. Those two games were two examples of us uh, really struggling to maintain how to play a game with such uh, loose loose mechanics. Yeah. And I think that, that was literally my biggest gripe was it was too loose for me. I, I want to be... Held constricted back by a leash, you yes know? yeah exactly. oh, no, mechanical guidance you know? is like, yeah. i was oh Jake just loved juicy it. loose <laughs> yeah. loved he would play it all the time if he could yeah that, i don't i don't there's a part of me that doesn't blame you for I sure i like being free i like i love the idea of being free like to play flat, with the mechanics like a, <laughs> like well, like, a flesh bat flying yeah. in the sky <laughs> yeah <laughs> that game left me so many opportunities to do so many cool things. That is true. Is it cool or was it weird? It was they are one and the same. Yes. Depends, <laughs> depends on what your interests are. That's very true, actually. I feel like if Aaron had the opportunity to sit down and play Apocalypse Keys, uh, that might have been an, an, a pretty... Steve would have thrived in that world. I, you could oh, have been a Steve, for sure. You oh, could have actually been man. Steve with the mechanics. That, there was a easy. It was easy to make a Steve. Yeah. His archetype fits one of theirs. He fucked up like six toilets beneath each other in a row. That happened. Just plunging. Well, Just, you know, sometimes you go to Taco Bell. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to fix it. I got the, scared. The, the food in Albuquerque every time. Oh, man. No, that's probably not too the grave. <laughs> <laughs> that Love is that. a good example of the difference between Monster of the Week and Apocalypse Keys. Yes. Is a monster as such as Steve being a werewolf yeah. fighting the worms got fucked up. Yeah. Versus us being able to demolish buildings. Yeah, you know, fucking baller true, yeah. him as a, war a werewolf would be comparatively. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You would have yeah. thrived in this world. That's yeah. very true, yep. Which which is uh, that another reason why I felt like that might be the case, because, like, you had talked about it when you sent in that bit for the review, which I I very much appreciate, because it was such a cool little Easter egg to oh, our yeah. review. That was awesome. Um, uh, So thank you for that, sir. But I feel like all the things that you wanted to do as Steve... Right, uh, now that I'm looking back in hindsight, it's like those are all things that would have played so fucking well in Apocalypse Keys. Just one for one, if this if the system was different, the fight with the Red Cap would have been just like you doing baller, like underworld evolution type of fucking doing werewolf up shit. Wolf shit. Yes, absolutely. Mortal, Mortal Kombat fatalities. Yes, totally. Yeah, I mean it, that's that's the main difference of the game. Yes. If you like the Powered by the Apocalypse system, and you want to. Recreate Supernatural or the X Files or what have what if you want to have a fun ass time? You know, well, either if, of them. If, well, well, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, if you want that kind of thing, Monster of the Week is great. But if you want to be overpowered and uh, really not have to worry about your mortality, Apocalypse Keys is the way to go for that. I feel like we all don't want to really have to worry about our mortality. Yeah, but I think part of the fun in video games. I mean, it's the reason people play Dark Souls. That's you know, true. It's like there's just that that risk versus reward thing is very high. Yeah, yeah. Call of Cthulhu is ends. very much that too. It it very, yeah, it is. Um, it is very Dark Soulsy. Which is which is very. I, I've always thought that it was very fun doing those things in either capacity. Obviously, wh whichever side of the year that we did it on. Yeah. But um, we always joked about the idea that people might be like, "Man, Nevada and Wentworth got off real easy." Like either Chris l might have let them off easy, or the games. The whatever they were playing let them off easier or whatever, and it's just like no, we got very very lucky with, did. The, with the things that we did. Well, and I only recognize that now. Luckily, 
because yeah. you guys decided not to follow him. Right. Um, Edge of Darkness ended appropriately because you did what you were supposed to do. You guys actually did the thing. So like you you succeeded on your own on your own merits. Right. Uh, however, Sundown over White Hills, I threw you a bone on that one <laughs> that... just because I wanted their lineages to to go on. If they all died there, it tells a very different story. It leaves a different story to be told. Right, right. You know, I didn't want to have to, like, because I was thinking that these three guys are what kind of started the D-pick. Like, it's not a Lovecraft Or these four, because you got to imagine Sheriff was in on that, too. Yeah, they, yes, yeah. yes, that makes and sense. And that's really the, that's the origin of it. And that was, it was kind of, you could almost call this episode D-pick origins. Back to the heavy roots of the D-pick. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> That, that's actually one of those things that I, I was considering as well about like um, how the end of our last Call of Cthulhu game ends yeah. with us going to the bar and all that shit. And, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a great moment where uh, Tom gets to say, don't sniff glue and whatever, and it's <laughs> yeah. a great ending. <laughs> but then there's that moment where I thought about the, the, the post credit scenes of a Marvel movie where you actually play like the sound of somebody walking like oh, yeah. into the bar or whatever. In the background, Jack and Troy sitting at the bar, like Troy arguing with Jesus each other. Troy Jesus Wolverson. <laughs> <laughs> he has a family name. <laughs> and then, like, just Vegas kind of putting himself back behind the bar and, like, yes, here's your fucking whiskey, you two animals, and whatever else. And then walking back over and, like, um, how can I help you, sir? You need a drink? And then just, yes. Uh, whiskey on the rocks, please. I can't do his voice, you know, but like, uh, yeah, like you a thirty a something. Uh, yes, <laughs> like what would, what, yes, what would Daddy, Went, what would <laughs> <laughs> what would Wentworth sound like ordering a drink at this eighteen eighties fucking saloon? Hmm. Like, and he's like in his twenties at that point. Uh, I think oh, early thirties. So you 30s, want a young Wentworth? Like early thirties, I think is what it is technically. Well, how, do you remember how old he is? I think it was fifty-seven. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I want to say fifty-seven. Okay, well, if that's the case. Going from 25 back to 88. 20, 20 when it was, was when it 20? Nevada. Even 20? Even 20? Even 20 when it was okay. in Nevada. So, yeah, he would have been... 17? No, he'd be... So what? 32 years off of 57. 24. 24. From 1920 to 1885? Well, 1920 to 1900, he's already 37. And then 27, and then three more years. Two more years. What did I say? <laughs> okay, regardless. We ain't no mathematicians. So yeah, you 20, want a mid thirties Wentworth ordering a drink at the it's it's the Little Sparrow Saloon at the at the Little Sparrow Saloon. Do you catch that reference, by the we way, did. coming from the uh, Plenipotentiary? Yes. yes, very nice, very nice. Solid as a uh, very nice Little Sparrow <laughs> Saloon <laughs> proprietor Ezra Sparrow Song. Yeah. Oh my God. Actually, Vegas Jones. Um, well, it's all one and the same, really. Yeah, uh, technically They're all one and the same. True. All right, so mid twenties Wentworth ordering a drink at some little bar in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Can I get? Can I get you something, sir? I have a Manhattan. A what? Give me your finest rot gut. That sounds about right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's You're like I welcome. was there. <laughs> you were there. You're sitting right there. God. <laughs> That was a lot of fun, actually. I'm really glad we did that. Absolutely. Um, so we've been playing Starfinder for a bit now. Yes. That's um, something that we're not going to say a whole lot about because the uh, review for that is the place to say that. Yeah, for sure. But uh, it's been awesome. It's 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 been a journey. It's it's pretty fun. Because it's like I, it is my first foray into a heavily scripted game oh, yeah. when, it, when it was something like this. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, man, this is so far out of our wheelhouse, you know? Like, I, know. like, I was like... It, the irony of us talking about how we prefer less loose games mechanically. Yeah. And then I'm sitting here, I'm looking at them like, man. The deeply mechanical game. What do I what do I do when they when they don't do any of these things? Yeah. <laughs> no, and then you prompt them accordingly. And that's, right, that's absolutely. Very good. Like when I figured, that's why I ran Call of Cthulhu. Takes like you me kill a little bit. Key NPCs, you know. Oh, you absolute <laughs> fucking murder hobo. <laughs> <laughs> like it's I think I think it's actually a good time to draw a few kind of similarities between this and Depths of Drasted going back to something mm. that Aaron yeah, was part of as well. About that yet. Because we it's obviously a, a a more complex system than 5e, but it is the closest to what we have done on on air. Right. Because uh it's the only other game where combat has been the same kind of complex system. Yep. And um I think that's really the thing that I realize now after having something that's far longer and i don't want to sound negative saying like it like it holds us up or anything like that but combat just by the nature of what it is is like oh well 
this is most of this episode. Yeah. And um, I guess that's something that it's it's not that big of a deal. Hell, if you like listening to long plays of series and stuff like that, it's just going to kind of naturally become that. Yeah, you're used to that if that's what your thing is. Um, but it's it's interesting because that uh, Drasted was also a pretty heavily like scripted thing when it came to just like what was in each room and all that. Yeah, for Drasted, that was the only time I ever ran anything. Yeah. So he, I wanted to run it as close to script as possible. Sure. Yeah, it was great. It was, that's that's it was, my advice to anybody who starts. It was great to hear because I heard it before was I was it? part of this. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Oh, I think man. I, man. it's even I, saying that we were doing Fate Core uh, or like he was listening to Fate Core when he joined Monster of the Week might have been not the case. Well, no, no, it was. We were doing drastic. It was, it was, no, it was Fate Core because, because I had. I told him about John Cena prior. <laughs> oh yeah, and, a and forewarning. Right, but I didn't tell him anything about it. He, he was fake. I was like, I was like, you know what? Jake plays a character that is absolutely bonkers and is the greatest shit. You 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 called him manic. I recall. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but the best part was that he was literally just getting done with listening to the first episode of Fake Core, and he's like, "What are you even talking about?" Because <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. so the fucking <laughs> normal then. That was Jake's first episode ever recorded with him. Right. So he was so just reserved and normal so, and whatever. So his his on air debut was actually way later or earlier than his actual debut. Yes. Because I think he, he had debuted, Jake, you debuted in episode seven. It was all a ploy to was, get you Levi. It was a future past <laughs> Jake. Yes. Yeah. And like Sloan was a was oh, a more experienced Sloan. Jake. <laughs> I was, I was level was two good. at that point. Well, yeah, you, you debuted on episode seven, but plus, your first episode was speech. actually episode 11. Yes. Just put that in perspective. Yes. Good old lucky 11 or whatever they say. So actually, your your original debut was already at four sessions with play. Yeah. And five, look, actually. I just have to be the gear in the fuck, or the, the, the wrench. The gear? <laughs> yeah. The, I need to be I, the gear I, without I, the wrench. I'm, the I work on my own. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just in my bubble. <laughs> so what? which one of these... Um, Gameplays has been your favorite so oh, far. That's a great, a great question. fucking question, brother. Oh, yeah, you can't fucking do this to me. Uh, I am because it was definitely Call of Cthulhu <laughs> for me, <laughs> really, because I freaking loved it so much. So sundown. Was okay, your wait, wait, one. wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Can we have two parts to this? What was your favorite like playthrough, and what was your favorite character? Oh, favorite okay. character. Oh, I like that Out too. Of the entire first year, yeah, I like that too. Aaron, you go first. My favorite playthrough. Was drastic because I was running it. And <laughs> yeah, I get that. Drastic and I was good. just, you know, balls deep in it, and I loved it. Also, you did get like a fan shout out for like narrating that, and also for the um, I uh, it, guy I know. He's actually really hard to get to listen to anything because he's very particular, and he absolutely loved you as Wentworth, and he says you have a very good radio voice. Shit, that was Jack. He also said that for uh, you, Chris. Thanks. But um, he was. Very impressed with Wentworth because well, everybody's the Wentworth best. is yeah. the best. He is the best. Yeah, but but we can't use him. Obviously, he's just always top pedestal, you know. But that when he true. comes to your favorite character, you can't use him. So mm-hmm. yep, you got put the Wentworth on the pedestal. So my <laughs> favorite arc was called Cthulhu. Just the one shot. I, I love the one shot, but. The whole playthrough was definitely the first version of Call of Cthulhu. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. How about On your the podcast? Sure. Okay. And then, and then favorite think, character that's oh. not Wentworth. I don't care about myself. <laughs> well, I mean, well, that's fine. Who, who's, who's your favorite? Okay. If we My all have to make character? a list, if we have five lists, it was Sloan. Sloan. Oh Sloan McCord is your favorite character. <laughs> what? Sloan was good. <laughs> what? Hell yeah. What? Aaron, what? I oh, don't so, believe. So Drassel you was at your all. favorite. Uh, what was your favorite character? My favorite character that I played well, that or you, my favorite character? You can say both. That, that, that you've matter. ever really experienced in the show. So uh, if we have to go with the show, and of course it's Wentworth Evans. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't pick that. We already stated that. Hey, hey wait, if wait, anybody wait. can pick Wentworth, it's Sarah. That's uh, fair. He doesn't know as many but characters. To be fair, as I've said many times, I fucking hate him <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> right, right. Because he's an asshole and he plays himself. He fair. does. Yeah. He Wentworths as Wentworth will. <laughs> Jake, what's your favorite arc and what's your favorite character? Oh man, mine also could be Metacris. Metacris, yeah. Oh, oh Wagner, yeah. Oh, Wagner, yeah. Wagner was good too. Oh Wagner yeah, was oh, champion was of the meta. One. I I'm gonna have to say that my favorite arc would be the Numenera arc. Okay, really? 
Yep. Vortex. I, I liked I liked that it was challenging, but once I figured out how it worked, it was right. I, I, I understood the game. I got to do a lot of cool things as Umbris. Yep. And him as a him as a character was also me developing as like a, a, like a, I got way more confident with trying to do voice. Sure, stuff. you, you played, could tell. You played John for a long, long time, and that was very reactionary and yeah. um, like knee jerk improv. And I I really enjoyed that because it, you were the you were the wrench for I was so the gear. many things. Okay, yeah, you were run, you were the one gear in the only machine that like <laughs> nobody else was part of that machine. <laughs> Everybody's like, "What does this thing do?" And somebody's like, "I don't know. I think it makes ice cream, but I don't know what it is." <laughs> Jeez. All right, favorite favorite character though. Oh man, it's got it's got to be Oberon. I'm sorry, <laughs> it's got to be. It's such a I, pick. Are we talking well, player character? Doesn't or really NPC matter. Character? It is a player really character. Oh, That's well, like a hidden player. Oberon. Yeah, yeah he's, he's the unlockable. <laughs> yeah, he, he's no, he's my unlockable. I got to have so many different weird moments with yeah. him so far. Oh, yeah, yeah. So so it, it has to be Oberon then. For me, yeah. it is Oberon. But if I had to choose like a secondary, it's Huey. Huey Night was gross. like the most genuine little boy I've ever met. <laughs> and oh, John, uh, John honestly hated him from the beginning. Like I don't know why. I, I, he had a real tough time dealing with him. I don't know why. But he eventually grew to love him as like a little brother that he was trying to take care of so when he eventually shot his hand off he felt so fucking bad especially after he found out that it didn't save him yo yeah yo that's that was really like when you guys decided to go talk to the the ghost of james mccready what the fuck are we doing right, oh my right. god oh, it's yeah, ridiculous but no when you guys went to do it that's when i had decided like right away i know jake's already said that john's probably still alive and if they go there I'm. I was very glad that you prompted like a. Is there something that you'd like me to take care of? Right, right. Because I literally, I had already had it in my mind. I'm like, God damn it, thank you, Chris. Because <laughs> I knew like the way that we had acted towards each other at the very end of the show, as as James and John was hostile because it's like I had an idea of what was going on and he didn't, and I, I love the idea that he blamed him for it, and it's like a real point of guilt. It's not anything that we scripted. It just kind of happened, and it was a very organic way for me to even just personally. So, Apocalypse Keys was your favorite arc? <laughs> no, no. Uh, that, that, yeah, that's, Monster that's, of the that's Week was Mo Monster of the Week was my favorite arc. Okay. Uh, um, obviously, it was it was it was large, and I will say even uh, like just to specify more, um, the the final arc of it. James isn't my favorite character by any means, but his growth from like the person that I wanted him to be in the beginning. It's just that I got to develop that more and more and more and being able to do that as a defunct like or like a defaulted lead to to a group of people because it's like i i get to vaguely lead these people on this journey and it's like if it really felt like a passing on the mantle type of thing in the most like sad way yeah it's it's actually probably the most call of cthulhu bleak ending of all the things that we've done realistically because like of. we know or the listeners know what's happening yeah it feels like a victory to everybody else a very tense victory in the show but we as character or we as players already know that nobody won i won you, you, that, chase yes. graves won no you no you, you as the as the <laughs> he keeper <did. laughs> okay. anyway well, he, he, was, he, he was the he keeper one his, he achieved his his, his um, ultimate goal yeah yeah his soul is free absolutely so what was your favorite what character your what was your favorite arc oh i'm on the last uh knocking on death's door oh okay um i i i just more so i loved your guys' shit and i i just loved being like this yeah. weird old little part of it but as when it comes to a character that i love more jesus fucking christ man that is oberon is a perfect example of somebody who has like i love him so much as a character because it, it, it you embody him so much and it's the same thing as wentworth to me I like I envy you guys for that. I really I, like it's it's very very cool. I'm I feel very privileged to have actually just been doing this with you guys for that reason. And like I, I don't it's, <laughs> I don't want to feel like good point. I'm shitting on Levi and Jake because like no, you guys aren't as good at this. Man, um, nobody thought that until you said it. <laughs> you son of a bitch! I didn't want not thinking that. No, it, it's. <laughs> Come I fell out of his chair. They were kidding. <laughs> He's gone. No, Oberon, I, I okay, I'd have to probably pick Oberon myself as well because You can't. I can. He picked Oberon, you picked Oberon, I'm gonna pick Oberon. You countered all of us whenever yeah. we talked about anything as 
o six different characters. Oberon embodies Chris's uh, his, true his ID. Chris's id is <laughs> Oberon. It's kind of true. Okay, it's Oberon, <laughs> but pick your second then. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your second? Levi? Me? You didn't pick one. Yeah, you have to too. I was going to get at you once we're second. done. You said a premise. <laughs> um, now you made such a big deal of it. I don't like. I don't get to say Huey now. I, I'm not going to anyway. It's Umbrus. It was Umbrus. It, it's, well, Umbrus is great. Umbrus another, is great. Another person who just uh, literally just constantly just shit on Faroon, and I loved it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that was wonderful. It's, I'm sorry, I forgot your name for like two or three oh, episodes. Man. Man. Right. So, I thought uh, not your name, your backstory with me. <laughs> right. No, we've known each other since we were kids. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. For a long time. Don't listen to her. Umbris did the same thing that Oberon and Wentworth did as well, mm -hmm. and that's a that's also why I loved him. He was very uh, reactionary and like so quick. So basically, everyone at the table minus we're Levi. all sucking our dicks together. Oh, you shut well, up! Yeah, because <laughs> when you played um, uh, um, for Numenera, oh, Kalein. Kalein had some fucking quippy one-liners too. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Once yeah. It, up it, to the idea of not being It's literally just your guys' personalities in these characters. I and here I am in the corner, sitting quietly, uh, playing with my yo-yo. <laughs> <laughs> That's Starfinder. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> he's working on his string skills because his not skills were so bad. They were so I bad. Know. He's just in his mind now, so every yeah. skill he like act, like like passively does is rope. Or now he's doing rope. like yo-yo skills no, whenever no, he has no. to like tie off freight. That's that's my it. that's my favorite part about you. Um, Fucking up the Starfinder game, being Glenn, because I was like, no, <laughs> not at all. I, you do whatever you want. I'm going, I'm going to Whoever. react to the way that I'm going well, to react to about it. it but do whatever you want, and it makes me, it made me happy to hear you be the person. Yep, I'm doing it, <laughs> <laughs> and like it makes me laugh even more that I'm not with no mali with no malicious intent whatsoever. You just get absolutely crushed <laughs> for your for That's your cro for your cross-eyed fucking <laughs> Glenn runs it rushes in type of shit. So yeah. Aaron, for the next forty plus days, for one hour a day, you must listen to the world standard. <laughs> <laughs> I will do my best. Hey, that's all we can ask. It, yeah, no, we're not going to demand it of you. We're not going to force anything down your throat. We understand that. Thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. No problem. <laughs> now, to touch on something else that I'm hoping I actually have time to you know get together with you guys with my second favorite character that is not a part of the oh. is not an on air character as this of is yet. Oh, yes, of course. I would very much like to bring the pample moose to the peoples. <laughs> because the peoples know the pample moose. Everyone loves the pample moose. I've never heard of the pample moose. Oh, you are man. full Other of the shits. You are you full of them. Through Nate <laughs> to give is you, the only reason I know of the right, pample So to give you insight into who he is, um, during quarantine, our, our table game died. Yes. And uh, it was reborn in the ashes of uh, Roll20. Yes, <laughs> and we played, um, we played, uh, blah, 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 what did we play? Curse of Strahd. Curse of Strahd. Which I ran, we played with you, Nate, as uh, Daedric Rootshot. Yes. He was a dryad uh, ranger. Yes, very fun character to play. That's actually where the, the another, like, world standard origins, that's where fucking Kalane's voice came from. That's true, yep. As I, I practiced that with those guys. Uh, your uh, significant other, Heather, played... Uh, blah, Prim. Prim. Oh. Mm, I think so. No, Prim right. was uh color changing gnome. Yeah, she no, was, that was our star. That was that was our pathfinder. Right, too but easy. she was still a tiny, uh, tiny race. She was uh, something halfling I, or gnome. I'm sorry to her, but I don't remember. It's all right. Uh, Danny was there. He was uh, he was your roommate at the time. Um, he played a half orc barbarian, I think. Yes, named uh, McJuicer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so we had our gonna give him the juice. We had oh, our our, no. uh, our mutual friend, our our, our friend uh, Aaron Butler. Yes, playing. Uh, he was a uh, turtle. turtle monk whose name again escapes me. Of course. Um, and he of course, really likes to play monks. He does, and he's, he's good. Very at it. good at it. Yeah, he uh, he's the best monk I've ever played with. Uh, and gross. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hi. So for what you don't know, he calls us penis. I'm glad the monk. you got it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Whatever. <laughs> um, so and then of course Aaron Hume here played the Pample Moose, who was a half elf bard. Uh, bard. Yeah. I feel like maybe the Pamplemousse was just human. I feel like he might have been. Might have. He probably was. I don't know. I think the best part about him being a bard was he did the most bardly things, but I always felt like if he pulled out like a loot or something, he'd just be like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and then just bust out some fucking amazing melody shit. <laughs> Dude, he's like, I've never touched this before, but He thank played you. live. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. He t- no, <laughs> he, totally... he joined our because we, we got our, our table game to start up one more time, like the last well, a couple more times. And Aaron, you showed up to that and played the Pamplemousse in the actual normal campaign. Yeah. Um, well, you ended up being an NPC because you only played a couple months, but yeah, no, he had a he had a concert there and it was oh, ridiculous. No, no, in Curse of Strahd, the Pamplemousse led a fucking parade through the center of town. Oh, that's yes. Right. Oh my god. It, yeah. When it comes down to people being like, uh, oh, this person plays a bard. I rolled to seduce werewolf. Ha, 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 ha. And it's like, oh, my God. And he did that. This ridi- <laughs> no, you're right. This, you ridiculous, well. this ridiculous played out trope that I always heard about people doing mm-hmm. as bards. And the way that he did it was so fucking low key and skeezy, dude. It was totally <laughs> that I ball. didn't real I didn't realize at all that that's what he was doing until until the moment where he's like, "Wait, where's Pamplemousse?" And he's just like, "He's gone." He was like a half dog woman. <laughs> yes, he was like he's in a tower having sex with a chimera woman. <laughs> <laughs> so if ever there's a time where Pamplemousse can be here, that's I think we're doing it. That's when I think we play something like. Dude, uh, any any single um, high fantasy role playing game because we have a ton in our collection. Honestly, yeah, that's Take, a good idea. Pample, as long as there's a bard, there's a pample move. How about this? How about if you have any idea of what you'd prefer to play, like that's what kind of game system you might want to play? Absolutely. We'll we'll save it until you can come back and play pample moves. That's a great point. There we go. Anything that has a bard or a bardy bardy bardly bard- maybe maybe that's when we'll come bard- back. Yes. And Bardarian. Actually, we'll do we'll do Pathfinder. <laughs> Um, second edition. We could do Pathfinder 2E with a bard. I, would, I would love to be introduced to the Pamplemousse. That'd be, yes, that'd awesome. be a great place to put The Pamplemousse knows so. that he would love to be introduced to the Pamplemousse. That is, uh, he uh, also calls his penis the Pamplemousse. <laughs> oh, no. Why wouldn't you at this point? <laughs> we are one in the same, you see. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So the question is, how much do you want to see the Pamplemousse? Oh, God. <laughs> I, uh, I, don't, I don't know which question I'm answering, and both of them are completely opposite answers. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, please the <laughs> I will say this. Roll to seduce. <laughs> I think the last thing that I might have wanted to say was any of the criticisms that we have for any of these or, or and anything that might have sounded negative before is literally just base level. We enjoyed everything that we've done anyway. It's like atmospheric lighting. It doesn't always work for the situation given. Pick, that's the, pick the game for the atmosphere. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Not turning the disco lights on for the delivery man. That's yeah. probably a bad idea. <laughs> you pick. It depends on what, what, what he's delivering. <laughs> I feel like that's what we how we played Apocalypse Keys was the disco light for the delivery guy. I mean, you're probably right. It was probably meant to be more of a sitting in your bedroom touching each other's faces kind of game. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> well, let's we're, move we're, on. There's we were, no moving on to do. It my was friend. a basement, and we're still all within kissing range. That's very that's true. Yeah. yeah. That's now brought to my attention. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we oh, just, oh, hey, no. <laughs> uh, that means cash monies for the studio with the AC, maybe. Okay. Oh, it's God. hot in here. <laughs> it's hot in this basement. <laughs> All right. Well, we've gone over a lot. We've done a lot in the mm-hmm. last year. And we're going to do more. Yeah. It's, it's kind of surreal to be here, you know? I had even talked about it in the first episode. It's, it's rare that you get a group of people to play in a social setting. Mm-hmm. For for you to be able to get a group of people together weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, like all of those are ridiculously hard to maintain. And then to be able to get together and do a show regularly like this. Thanks for it, guys. For real. Thank you. Because it's, it's like doing a podcast really is like not like a high pedestal to try and reach. <laughs> but it has been a dream of mine to be able to create something with people that I enjoy and... um I very much appreciate you guys for saying yes to me when I asked all of you. I also want to just let you know that the uh, one in four joke no longer applies. It's two in five now. <laughs> Currently at the table. Yeah, it went from 25% to 40%. Statistics, statistics go down as soon as this night is over. Yeah, next week, statistics back on 20 no, I. Uh, that's. I agree. That's I'm. I'm. I'm glad I'm at this table with you guys. As Thank well. you for adding to my. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're doing that for part. My, you yeah, fucking I I dick. There's a part where you get to pretend to be emotional. I was alone for a you. very long time. You're <laughs> not now. There's a lot of time <laughs> spent in that tent. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, up Let's in end the this on a very sad note. No, it was when I was in the mountains. I had a place to live. God damn it. Well, thank you for coming back and. For the most part, listening to us rant here, Aaron, <laughs> I, I'm so glad to see your beautiful face. 
freshly naked as I shave now. Yes, that 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 part is the least <laughs> beautiful of it. <laughs> With my superhero butt chin. Yes. I'll give you that for sure. <laughs> You'll give me my superhero butt chin? No, I I, I mean I don't have it. Oh, the, I was going to say I, I pawned like that shit a while ago. It has the perfect resting place for him. Well, it's a very small dimple. I don't <laughs> Oh no, why me? <laughs> like I said, perfect. <laughs> I want to thank you guys for you know, let me come back. It's been real time, not game time. It has been eight months since yeah. I moved to Pennsylvania. Oh, it's a long time, oh, man. <sighs> like whole babies could form inside women. Very nearly. Very nearly. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are all my friends. I love every single one of you. I love you too, buddy. Very deep. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to be quiet, but my voice is gone, so it just turned into this weird, <laughs> almost cry, crying. Almost crying. Keep your hands clean. <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite arc was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, please. Monster of the Week, the last half. <laughs> um, favorite character was John Cena. Don't sniff clue. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>